Why, hello everybody and welcome to a very special live stream. Got a different setup tonight. I am actually on a uh, wireless mic. I've got a lav mic on so you don't see the big, the big microphone like I normally have. I've got my headphones over here cranked up so I can hear my interview guests. And I'll tell you, there's a reason why I don't have my big, beautiful Shure mic. I left it in my hotel room when I was in Tennessee doing some stuff and it's getting shipped back to me. So hopefully it arrives safely. But you know, sometimes when, uh, when you don't have your normal equipment and you go to a different mic setup, sometimes it works out. So tell us what you're drinking in the chat. Uh, make sure you hit the like button. And if you've got a bottle of Smoke Wagon, break it out and sip it because we have got the distiller, the owner of Smoke Wagon. He's going to be joining us. Also, two, uh, two members are going to be joining us and helping us pick a 13-year-old Smoke Wagon. Folks, I've been on a list for this for like over a year. I'm, I'm telling you, I've been, uh, I've been, I've been sneaky about like how I've been trying to get my barrel picks over the past year. Uh, I always try to get something special. I try to get something fun. And you know, Smoke Wagon, he's doing such a great job over there with his barrel picks. I feel so fortunate to have the opportunity to uh, to taste and pick a 13 year old barrel pick from. Uh, from Smoke Wagon. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and bring in Aaron, and we are going to chat a little bit about the distillery. How you doing, Aaron? Welcome to my YouTube channel. Uh, you are that... streaming live around the world. How hey, you doing? how you doing? I'm not bad. I'm not bad. So I saw today that you got you put a uh, you put a hat up for charity. I did. Yeah, it was. Uh... The first high-end hat I ever bought. It was the first hundred percent beaver hat I ever bought. And, so you, um, you got uh, so you got like um, you got like some kind of like uh, like connection to this hat. Like, I mean, did you do like you know, drink your first whiskey with it? And what <laughs> what, what was spe- what's special about the hat? Uh, uh, I don't think I drank my first whiskey with it. I definitely did a lot of barrel picks in that hat. That's for sure. That was my uh, that was my regular hat. Like a year and a half to two years ago until this place called Watson's Hat Shop. They they spoiled me with with their hats and I can't ever go back to any other hats. Now tell us, uh, you know, for the, everybody has kind of uh, gotten to know, in the world of whiskey, everyone's kind of gotten to know, uh, you know, Smoke Wagon. Uh, Tell us your story. How did you get, how did you get into the the crazy world of whiskey? Uh, yeah, so I started in the bar business. I, uh, with my business partner Jonathan, we had we had owned a bar uh, here in Las Vegas called the Griffin. And uh, man, it was so long ago. It was eleven years ago, and we were. Uh, it was uh, the uh, the irony is it started was going to be vodka. We were drinking tons of vodka. That was before two thousand nine, two thousand ten. You know when like premium vodka was all the rage. And we're like, we're going to make a corn-based vodka in the U.S. Uh, it's going to be silver filtered. I, <laughs> I tracked out this Russian silver filter system through India. Um, and just as time went on, and as I got older, I started drinking bourbon because I, I had to slow it down. I was a little too crazy. Mm-hmm. And um, and so when I started, you know, I, my, my first consultant was uh, Dave Pickerell. And I was totally intimidated by the process. And uh, he said, you know, don't worry about it. Just just go and buy some aged juice. That's what everyone does. And uh, it was an interesting time because all of the, you know, big suppliers closed their doors on craft brands because yeah. collectively we were seen as competition. And that was six months after MP had purchased Seagram's plant in Indiana. Uh, we, con- <laughs> we contacted them, and uh, they would not sell to Dave because the sales rep used to be the head of Makers, and he was the guy that fired Dave from Makers, and they didn't like each other. So we, we, Jonathan and I had to fly out there, and because he was also kind of done uh, dealing with craft guys, because everybody was like all talk, you know, and, right. and nothing was really going through. And I mean, they had all these contracts with Diageo and, you know, so they kind of thought that everything was going to be like that. And um, so they're like, if you're for real, come out. And uh, we went out there and we bought 
all the 36% rye uh, bourbon they would sell us. And at the time, everything was racked. They didn't have the new warehouses where they have to stuff. Everything was in uh, exclusively in the old Seagram's built warehouses from the 30s. And, um, yeah, it just went from there. I mean, it, the the whole blending of different vintages was almost, I shouldn't say almost, it was totally accidental. We originally bought five year bourbon from them and we were going to dump those in these big giant tanks and the tanks never got approved by the city and so much time went by that all of a sudden stuff <laughs> stuff that we paid for them to lay down was four years old and and all the experts i talked to they're like oh well what you do is you just blend the eight year and the four year and you get it to taste like five year and i was like cool and that was Total horse. No, it's not. <laughs> that did not work. But what I did discover was that if I blended it a certain way, it had all the properties of the eight year and all the, the rye spice, you know, because 36% rye is a lot of rye. It's expensive. Small greens are expensive. Large greens are cheap. And so, and, and I was paying for that, for that flavor. And a lot of the rye was aged out in the older juice. And so, uh, I got everything I wanted. I got the, the fruit and the rye from the young stuff, but eliminated the thinness with the other stuff. Um, mm. But but as time you know as time went on, I, I learned something else that I was doing that I didn't realize it then until I really started doing uncut. And that was people generally don't really like oak, and the young juice you kind of can get rid of the heavy tannins and and blend some of the oak out, and so. Initially, I was like, yeah, we're taking this young stuff and using old stuff to make it nicer. But really, the young juice was was um, getting rid of some of the, the properties of the older stuff that, that people, well, at least I don't like. I'm not a big oak fan. So, I mean, I can only yeah. do everything for my palate and hopefully it translates to what other people like. You know, you, you can't try to guess what someone else is going to want. Well, I think, you know, just to kind of like uh, kind of you, your plan at the top to do vodka I think we know that if if that plane had stuck, we wouldn't be talking tonight. So, <laughs> no. <laughs> now you've you've really developed uh, uh, kind of a cult like following, and you've you've built a brand. Um, you know, you're you're kind of at that point of 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 a brand's like, you know, structure where you draw you're probably drawing interest from like some of the larger companies. Are you getting contacted by like the Pernova cars and Constellations and Brown Foreman's right now? Because you're one of the hottest brands on the street. Uh, no, we're not at all. And I, I don't know if it's because they just don't understand, you know, because we're only in 11 markets. So um, they probably just see us as like, a, they, I don't think they understand the volume we're doing. So they probably just see us as like a little novelty brand, maybe. I, I don't know. Or maybe it's because of... All I ever talk about is how I don't want to sell because I, I love doing it. Um, but no, I haven't been approached by anyone. Well, I, you know, the thing is, everyone always says they don't want to sell, and then that big old fat juicy check comes along, and <laughs> and you know what? Maybe it's okay, and no one would hate you. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, the thing is, it's like the way it's going. It would have to be a really, really, really big check. Um, because of what we're, and, you know, this is like the fifth one and so far it's the most rewarding it's in, you know, cause it's always creative. Uh, the bar business, I love designing them and building them, but mm -hmm. once they were done, it, it was over. And, um, and this every day is something new, whether it's something just, you know, simple as like merchandise, but, you know, going in and figuring out the blend and doing these things, I, I like being active and, and now with the staff I have, it's like, man, I mean, I just waltz in there and like all my samples are there for me and I blend it up and I'm like, woo. And I'm like, yeah, see you later, everyone. <laughs> you know, here, here, here's the weights. Here's what you do. And then I come back and try the batch. And sometimes they bring a sample to my house after they have it batched up the way I tell them. So, you know, and then uh, we just bought this four acres right in the uh, heart of the arts district. And so, I mean, the tourism from that's going to be pretty amazing. So, it's awesome. I don't know. It's like, uh, I don't know if it's ego or, or what aspect of my personality is, but I, I like having something to show for myself. And I, and I, I like being the smoke wagon guy, you know, and, um, 
I think I mean it's I, it's, saw... it's such a it, it's such a brand uh, that really kind of uh, you know it, it caught fire within the community, and um, I was in I was in the uh, Bellagio Hotel having uh, having drinks with my wife uh, when we were in Vegas uh, a few years ago, and and this guy recognized me and um, he came up and gave me a bottle of, of smoke wagon. And he's like, it's a pleasure to meet you. This is a barrel pick from Total Wine. And I had known about you and I, of course, you know, followed you. And, um, but that was like, that, that barrel just wowed the shit out of me. And I contacted you <laughs> not there, not long after. I was like, I, I need to get a single barrel. I need to get a barrel pick. And you're like, well, there's like a long waiting list, you know, but, uh, and I, I just remember uh, really thinking that it, it, it had a very different flavor profile than um, a lot of the stuff coming out of Indiana, and it was just different. Um, and and I and the one thing that I kept doing is I kept looking at the bottle and thinking to myself, how the hell did he get pistols on the bottle? Because isn't it a isn't it like a federal like a fe, like isn't there like a federal mandate like you can't have guns on a on an alcohol bottle is it is it because those are like antique looking no it's just um it's just like an old advertising thing you know just like an old industry sort of uh thought that you don't want to mix the two but there's no there's no rules or regulations against it so it's the distilled spirits council pounding that on the on the on the desk i i yeah, I mean, I have a, a guy uh, that I work with closely uh, from from the company that coordinates all my my packaging, all the bottles and everything. And he's old, old Seagram's dude. I mean, he's he started Seagram's in the '60s. He's semi-retired, and he was like, "So this is what you're gonna do?" And I was like, "Yeah." And he, well, it's kind of what we we're always taught not to do. And I was like, "Pretty much, that's what everyone has said about everything I'm doing." Like, I was like, "I want amber glass." And they're like, you don't want amber glass. And I was like, why? They're like, because people want to see that bourbon color in the bottle. It's like the average consumer. I uh, I don't know. I've owned bars for twenty years, and I've never had anybody say, "Let me have that bottle. It's darker than the others." You know, and um, and even when when I started doing you know small batch, uh, which I wish I called something different because I had no idea that there was like uh. uh I don't know, some sort of pre, when people hear small batch, I don't know, there's some negative connotation now or something. I, I don't, you know, that I Aaron, I of. just did a video on this, you know, <laughs> I just did a video on this, like small batch means, it, it means nothing. It's not federally, you know, there's not a federal definition. Yeah. There's nothing, but I mean, everybody uses it. And you know, the intent yeah. of it, the intent of the word small batch is that it's going to be a handful of barrels, you know, going into a batch. Well, I mean, there are brands that are putting 200, 300 barrels in in a batch. Oh, 400, yeah. 400, and calling that small yeah. batch. That ain't small batching, you know? No. <laughs> I mean, there, there's no federal definition for single barrel. You can put single barrel on anything. You can put it on any bottle you want. There's no, there's no, uh, there's no definition. And even the definition for cast strength is like, I think it's, uh, I don't, and I don't even know if that ever got approved. It was only proposed that cast strength meant there was uh, no water added after time of tax determination, you know, and your, your time of tax determination is when you dump the barrel and report your new tax basis to the federal government. So you can add water to a barrel and it's still cast strength. You've just done it before. Yeah. You they had a, uh, they, they had a, like, there was like a 2% allowance uh, was kind of like the old, the old one. Uh, I'll, I'll be honest with you. Like the past year, um, I've kind of gotten light on my reg studies, so I don't know if that went through either. But uh, I do know that that it, was it, in the I, that was in the in yeah. the crop of all the all the things that were being proposed. I mostly remember the barrel thing, you know, where they were trying to change the definition yeah. of a barrel, and like, you know, you never saw so many craft distillers, you know, <laughs> grabbing their pitchforks. <laughs> Woo! Oh, oh, when it, when it had to be a uh, bourbon had to be fifty three gallons. I yeah, they were trying to propose that one. Yeah, yeah. But yeah which I'm a fan. I'm a fan store. of the bigger barrels. Don't get me wrong, but I don't think we should be taking away small barrels from anybody. You know, 
No, but, um, I agree. Yeah. You know, I have to say, I'm just so glad we can make this happen. I'm excited to have you here. And, you know, we got we got a barrel to pick. And I want to bring in uh, two, two members of my community. Nate out of Colorado. I think you know Nate. Um, and, um, and Eric in my neck of the woods, who is the... Who is a uh, I, he's an entrepreneur in the bourbon space now. So Eric, tell us a little bit about what you're doing, and and uh, maybe you can get a hotel resident out of it. <laughs> yeah, Fred. Uh, first, I want to say, uh, Fred, I appreciate you bringing me on. You're such a great mentor, and we've been friends for a while now. And one of the great podcasts we did was over a bottle of uh, Smoke Wagon. Uh, it was the Karma bottle um, from the Bourbon Enthusiast. So I just have to give a shout out to him as well. Aaron, um, it's a pleasure to be on here on stage with you and to hear you speak about how you're just some guys in, you know, in Nevada, Las Vegas. And you're like, I like I like vodka. And so um, <laughs> my, my background is... Uh, I kind of grew up, uh, you know, as an engineer and things like this, but I was always paying attention to what was going on. And I realized in Kentucky, um, bourbon and horses are a big thing. So um, I've kind of <laughs> dived into both of those. Yeah. So we got we got a horse race coming up here in a, in a week or so. So, you know, it's, it's exciting to, you know, this is kind of like the warm up to the horse race and the bourbon side of it. But um, I just, uh, I dabble in the, uh, hospitality business. I'm working on a hotel in Versailles, Kentucky. Um, I have several places around Louisville, Kentucky, where people come to stay, they go do the bourbon trail pick, or they come to go do bourbon trail, you know, check out all the distilleries and things like that. Um, so I just try to focus on the hospitality side of it. And so I'm trying to build out a brand of, you know, kind of the whole ecosystem of come to Louisville, come to, you know, wherever in Kentucky, go do the bourbon trail, have a place to stay, have a place to gather have a great bourbon and just share it with your friends. And I think that's the most important thing. A good bourbon shared with everybody is something that, you know, it, it, it's what this world was built off of. And I think that's, it can bring people that are completely at opposite ends of a perspective together. So that's mm -hmm. really what I really want to do. I yeah. totally agree. And it, and it, yeah. I mean, I, you know what I mean, I love giving it away, man. I'm, I give it away <laughs> every chance I get, you know, like you can make a lot of friends day. with it. I know that. Yeah, <laughs> you know they used to. Uh, politicians used to bribe bribe people to vote for them uh, by giving them whiskey. So that, that's I think that's one of the reasons why they didn't allow people to drink on election day, or what you couldn't sell alcohol on election days because uh, all the politicians were bribing folks. But um, that's and so Nate, tell uh, tell everyone about your whiskey society. I know you've done a you've done one of these before. You're you're no rookie to the smoke wagon barrel picks. Well, it, uh, I appreciate, Fred, thanks for having me on. It's an honor to be able to be a part of this. And uh, Aaron, great to see you again, man. Um, you we did a great event with our Whiskey Society with Aaron uh, earlier in the year. And also, we're very fortunate to be able to pick a, a private barrel in the eight year that we did. Um, uh, I don't even remember how far back, but it was uh, uh, barrel 305. <laughs> and, and that was delicious. And uh, to be able to go tonight with to uh, to be able to do a... 13 year i'm ecstatic uh, i can't even imagine uh what what we're in for tonight just knowing the quality of all these barrels i've tasted not just to mention that but even your baseline products aaron have been just outstanding but 5280 whiskey is a oh, thank you yeah man 5280 whiskey is a, a a small whiskey society in the mile high city uh denver colorado we've got great members we do uh, events we we focus on education and, and, and bringing people along in their whiskey journey. Um, it's important for us to, to be friendly and open to everybody, uh, whether you're a beginner or um, have been in this game for a while and, and uh, really try and uh, just create whiskey fellowship and get together. We haven't been able to do that this last year, but uh, we try and bring in a lot of uh, uh, whiskey people of the whiskey world into the Mile High City and do events in person. And, and we've been very fortunate and very, uh, very humbled by so many people that have come out and shared time with our whiskey society. And um, I agree with Eric. It's about opening whiskey, sharing whiskey, and 
creating memories and uh, that's what it's about. And that's just for me tonight. That's what it's about. So I appreciate the opportunity and thanks again for letting me be a part of this. Yeah, and I, I want to say too that, you know, uh, Aaron, your uh, people are commenting in the chat. Uh, Martin Flores uh, says, uh, Aaron and Smoke Wagon are as legit as they come. Uh, Gary, oh, thank you. Gary Pena, which, uh, you know, he can be a pain in the ass sometimes, but, uh, uh, <laughs> but uh, he says that uh, we pay for Aaron as much as his whiskey. So. Gary's uh, Gary is a big big fan of yours, and uh, I right just kidding. On. I just kidding, Gary. You're not really a pain on the ass. He just got promoted to uh, <laughs> captain for Delta Airlines, by the way. So, uh, whiskey tuber, whiskey nose writes, uh, "Smoke wagon is my top five right now," and wanted to say Ooh. thank you for your efforts. That's pretty. That's pretty cool. Well, it's really cool, Fred. I mean. Uh, and it, it's, you know, it's a creative endeavor. And when you have all these people where you, where you just try to do something and, and hopefully people like it and you get this sort of response, it's, it's very re rewarding, you know, and, uh, and I really appreciate all of them. If it wasn't for these guys, I, I love doing what I'm doing. It's a lot of fun. You know, that's like one of the things I talk about, like where you see some of these brands are like, I'm killing myself every day to bring you the best bourbon possible and it's like well, I, I don't know it's fun for me this is a lot of fun i have a good time <laughs> doing it and because of all these guys in the chat that are supporting me i get to do it it's amazing you know it's really cool it's uh it's a lot of fun and i appreciate all of them well and you've also you know you're also not afraid to take on the uh you know to people that kind of get you know you know, ruffian, if you will, on social media. And, and I'll tell you, like, that is, you know, we, we live in a culture and a society today that, you know, people can turn real quick on you. And yeah. when, when I saw when I saw the your, your fans sticking up for you, that was very impressive to me uh, of like, you know, how they would take your message and and battle in the trenches for you in the social media world. Well, uh, yeah, I appreciate it. You know, I'd, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a great community. It really is. I mean, the, the actual real, you know, like, like what we're talking about here, you know, sharing and everything. There's like so many people that are so positive and just want to share and they're, you know, the guys that are negative and just hating on everything. It's, I, I think it's, it's frowned upon, you know? And so it's almost like a cancer, like for everybody else. It's like having a good time and sharing and enjoying each other's company and like trying, you know, I think the thing that I, I talked to, you know, I was talking about, it's like back when you would, you know, find when music, when there was no internet, like music was obscure, right? You'd find a record and you'd bring it to all your friends. You'd want to share it with all your friends. And I'd say most of the bourbon community is that way with, with bourbon. They, they want to be the guy that's, like finding something cool and introducing people to it, you know? And then you have people that like want to find something so they can go, ha ha ha, look what I have that you don't. And, yeah. You know, it's. Those people, they, I, I, I bring people into my office all the time and every bottle in here is open. You know, this is a working environment, but I just hosted a good friend, Nick Wayne, uh, for his bachelor party. Uh, in here and it's just like it, it and we had cigars and it's just it's if you don't share and if you don't have that kind of like uh, if you don't if it's not about building the community in you know it's not as fun you know so I the, neg yeah. the negativity I, I'm all about education I think if you're using sometimes when you're educating someone it can come off as negative or if you're just stating an opinion but if you're just being like a, a trashy individual, we ain't got no time for that. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. So, all right. So we've got some work to do, boys. Well, we have, we have. Yeah. What do we got here? We got two. We got two barrels. What's? Uh, I don't. I only have the numbers. I don't have the proofs on mine. The ones. One's high, right? One's 120 something. Yeah, uh, 59. Yeah, 5906 is 121.3. 5614. So that's going to have a little bit. It's 
So the, the 120 is going to have a little more uh, desert out out here for quite a while. You know, because uh, MP, the old Seagram's um, warehouses, you know, when, when Seagram's built those in the 30s, they were, everything was specifically engineered to create the most naturally humid environment possible. You know, that's why it's in Indiana, because that's the way the wind blows and they get all the moisture up to, at least that's what they tell me. They get all the moisture up the Ohio River, you know. But it is one of the few places that the proof will go down over time because alcohol dissipates. So when I get those barrels at like 10, 11 years, um, you know, they're usually about 111, 112 proof. And so both of these have been sitting and the proof's been going up here. So I, I poured uh, 5614. I figured we'd go low proof and up. Ooh. Oh boy, that's a brown sugar butter bomb on up in here. <laughs> mm. Mm. Yeah, I, I uh, the first two samples that they pulled for me while I was out of town, I came back and tried them. I was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> these, <laughs> these are not the ones. <laughs> mm. And so how did you choose these two? Whew. Um, there aren't a lot of 13s left. So uh, I just, I was going to try all of them. And I tried these two and I just, I, I really liked them both. And so. Holy uh, shit. And yeah. I, I, didn't, shit. I didn't weigh them. So I, I don't know if one's short or not. I do think the higher proof one's a little shorter. It was harder to, to get a sample out of it with the thief. But mm -hmm. uh but I just love them both. I I, I sent you I sent I sent you the video where I was like I remember. Free. <laughs> this is I wanted to keep them. Well, thank you for letting your babies go in, into our gullets. What are we talking about? We got got to share, right? You That's know? right. Mm. All right, Nate, give mm. us your breakdown of uh, of one of the uh, 115 proof. I'm still going, Fred. I'm yeah. getting into this, but uh, lots of caramel. Some butterscotch, just just really nice and sweet. Mm -hmm. Not over hot. Really balanced. A little bit of pepper spice, which I always love on the end of that. little kick in the end. Yeah, it's... It's hard to find in those older barrels. That's what I. That's what I usually look for, in the old. That's like when even. I mean, now you know I'm not blending the 13 years, but when they were, when they were 12s and I was still using them for blending, the ones that still had like spice on the finish, those were the ones I would separate for barrel picks, and the the other 12s I would use for uh, for blending. Mm -hmm. Back I, in the I, day I, when. I feel like this barrel still got some life in it too. Like, if you if you. Like it could probably hang in there for another couple of years. It's beautiful. Eric, what's your palate telling you? It hits the the front, goes to the side, covers it in like uh, caramel butter, pulls it back down, and then it sits. It's still sitting for my. I think my first taste. It was, it was uh, very beautiful. I've I've trained and, him. And I've trained him well, Aaron. <laughs> long finish, long finish, chocolate on the end. So yeah, I have I'm a, still... I have a series that I that I do uh, or I was doing called Taste Camp. I'm about, I'll be relaunching it, and both Nate and and Eric were a part of that. And one of the, one of the exercises, um, you know, that we did was identify where things like hit on your tongue. And, right. and and it's like such a, an important exercise. Like, you know, people sometimes people think like, you know, professional tasters just make shit up, which I, I can understand. <laughs> I can understand why it can sound that way. But, you know, the process is like just focusing first on where it's hitting the tongue and then lasering in on, you know, what you know, normally taste it, you know, what you normally taste there. And uh, right. uh, Eric just demonstrated very effectively 
uh, class number two of Taste Camp. So that was that was exciting for me to see Eric in action. I, I should do one of those Taste Camps. I'm not. I'm always trying to pick out flavors for people, and I've never been that great at it. Like it, even in the beginning, you're we like, "Well, how does it taste?" I'm like, "It's really good. I taste better than the other way I did it." So this you know, is, this I, is I, I think. I think you're under. I think you're underestimating that ability. Um, just because, just because you don't break it down like that, does not mean right. you can't find good whiskey. I mean, if you know good whiskey, good is good. And right. and I, I remember um, it, I, I wasn't present for this. So Parker Beam, Parker Beam is one of my heroes, and uh, and he went to the first time he went to. Um, uh whiskey fest he looked around and told his pr guys like don't these people have jobs you know so like those those old school <laughs> those old school distillers they're just like good not good good not good you know they weren't breaking <laughs> yeah they weren't breaking down whiskeys into tasting profiles it's um it's hilarious uh how that um yeah. how that really um has changed over the years yeah, I mean, I, there's obviously there's a, a pl- you know a place for it for sure when um, you're trying to ex- explain uh, an experience you're having that somebody mm-hmm. else isn't, right? You know, like where did you review or something like that. But back when we, we used to do barrel picks, you know, these guys would all stand around in a circle, like try to wait, and, like everybody kind of afraid to say what flavors they were tasting. I'm like, guys, I know you're on vacation. And- you're in Los- I'm not on vacation. Just say you like this one or you don't like this one or you like that one better. Like, just, come on. <laughs> Let's keep it going here. Uh, you know, you don't have to pick out flavors. You're all trying it. You know, I'd be like, just think of it as like if you're uh, looking at something and you're talking to someone on the phone, and you're trying to describe it. If you were both there and you're like, oh, and I see trees and I see a cloud. You'd be like, yeah, be like, yeah I fucking see that shit too, man. Like, <laughs> why? <laughs> You know, it, it is it is funny. Like you can like uh, you can't tell you, you people should not tell someone else like what they should taste. You know, you just gotta like I- I- experience it, and yeah, and and if you like it, you like it, and that is all that matters. It's all yeah, that matters. That, that, yeah, because people in, will ask me, you know, how should I drink bourbon? I'm like, I don't know. However, you like it. You know, unfortunately, alcohol is not good for you. It's an indulgence. So. You should be enjoying it. That's, that's true. We, Eric, you and I, we've Nate, we've enjoyed it a few times. And, uh, <laughs> I just, um, I just started a Nutrisystem program, and I'm pretty sure this is not on it. So, did, uh, did, did you really? I really did. I, I got. I okay. So I got. I, I got to lose some weight, Aaron. I do too. I have an umbilical hernia, and I went to the doctor. And he said I was too fat for the surgery he, <laughs> he wanted to do. He doesn't, he doesn't want to use mesh. He was like, I was like all proud too. He's like, oh, why haven't you sooner? I was like, well, I was heavier, you know, and I've lost a bunch of weight, you know. And he was like, well, you need to lose too fat for this surgery. Wow. <laughs> so he was like, no, no more carbs. So I was like, oh man, all right, but yeah. So I can relate, but it's, uh, you know. <laughs> So you got a you got a hernia like is it is it hurt like you're walking around no, it's a hurt just uh, an umbilical hernia but he said it's no it's not my intestine it's just like the layer of fat sticking through because mm. I'm too fat. I've got that too, Aaron. Don't feel bad. <laughs> yeah, I uh, if if They're I had to common. get surgery, there would be you know, multiple layers upon layers and like, oh, wow, he actually does have muscle in there. The difference is Aaron's got to do his pull shots every once in a while when he's promoting. So <laughs> yeah, they're coming up. you don't need to be seen and out of shape, Aaron, man. You better get to the gym, brother. That's why all my shots are like from, you know, <laughs> <laughs> underwater to here. So now let's go to uh, the 5906. The one twenty one point three. Very, very different whiskey. Yeah. I tried very, to give you two different ones. Very different. Ooh. Oh yeah. 
Mm, that's tough, man. Yeah, that finish just keeps going. My tongue is tingling with some spicy goodness. Mm. That cinnamon's just taking a hold of me like big old fat, juicy cinnamon roll. Speaking of uh, yeah. something that's fatty, you know, it's like that icing's like all around it, and you got that good, moist uh, cinnamon roll. Friggin' A, man. This is absolutely gorgeous. This is a this is going to be very difficult because we can only choose one. There can only only be one winner here, mm. uh, gentlemen. And um, yeah, there is there is no loser Sorry, to be honest I, with you. But wow, I picked two good ones for you. I, that's what I try to do. I always want the, the choice to be hard. I think that was one of the reasons why the barrel picks earned such a good reputation because I would, you know, I would call them. I'd go all of them uh, before offering any. Uh, and it wasn't necessarily like a good, bad thing, but, you know, it's very hard to find a barrel that that's complex, that has, you know, I mean, obviously, it's, I shouldn't say it's easy, but you can achieve it through blending, but to find a barrel that has all these things going on, especially older ones where they usually just end up being kind of smooth, you know, and one-dimensional. Have you all watched Mortal Kombat yet? Not yet. Mortal Kombat, like with the video game? Yeah, the new no, movie. Movie. Yeah, the new movie. Yeah. Out. On HBO, no, what? HBO you can Max. Watch it, uh, HBO Max, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can watch it through like uh, end of May. Okay. Anyway, I just I was just thinking, finish it, you know. So. <laughs> um. This is not an easy one for me. This is actually very, very difficult. This is going to be... Usually there's like a, a pretty clear winner for me on my barrel picks. But this is a... This is a very difficult one to do. If it helps, I believe... 5614 is going to have a, a much bigger case yield than 5906. 5906 uh, was, was hard for me to pull samples out of. The front of that number two just floods your mouth with mouthfeel. I mean, it is just thick. a little bit hotter than the other one yeah definitely a lot more spicy cinnamon that made maybe yeah i mean 5906 is a is a cinnamon bomb um there's a vel velvety structure to 5614 5614 yeah, 50 is, a, is a mouthfeel bourbon you know so if you're really yeah, into it's so buttery yeah mm. if you're a, if you're a mouthfeel lover I, which i am uh, you know, fifty six. If, if you like it, if you like it thick in your mouth, that's. Good. <laughs> that's good. I mean, I don't know. What Are you we still talking bourbon airing? Right here. This is, uh, I grew oh, up in Louisiana. I think I just. I, I think I just, like I think I just got a hernia after every meal. This is the bomb. <laughs> I know it's difficult for Fred, but that is like my jam right there. What fifty nine oh six? Yeah, yeah, that's my jam right there. All right, where are, you, where are you on this, Nate? I think I'm leaning toward 5614. Yeah, to be honest with you, I just think that 5614 is a lot more well-rounded. I love, look, I'm a high-ride guy that loves a kick in the throat, and I love my spice. I love my cinnamon, nutmeg, baking spices, but I think most people will fall in love with 5614. It just, it's a well-rounded, it's got everything in it. It's a little bit more complex, so... That would be my choice. Yeah, and, and, and I, to me, it, it's this is a conversation of um, 
a little bit of, uh, of of mouthfeel. It really is about uh, you know mouthfeel for me yeah. on this. Like the the spiciness and complexity of fifty nine oh six is definitely there, but the beauty the beauty of that of of the fifty six fourteen just coating the palate, every inch of it dripping down like butter, just yeah. Beautiful. I think Eric described that well when you just even when you're tasting notes, just how it really coats everything for a long time. It's got a huge finish. Yeah, yeah. And then I go and taste this and I'm like straight fire. I mean it's like yeah. not fire, it's big up front for sure. It's like, a really big it's, up front. So, so I think we know where we're going, but the audience will go ahead and give you a chance to to see if you can change our mind. Um Let's say, unfortunately, you can't taste them, but would you rather buy like a, a, a buttery mouth coating uh, bourbon or would you rather have like a, a cinnamon super highway uh, with dashes of nutmeg and cinnamon roll city? You tell us. Ooh. And we'll just. <laughs> that, sucker's got, that sucker's got something going on at the end there, man. It It'll does. You up. Hmm. I'm 5906. Yeah, I like that that's what throat. I'm talking about. That's the good <laughs> stuff right there. You don't get that from every bourbon. I swear to God. No, you don't get you don't get that from every 13. That's a 13 year old barrel. That's, that's crazy insane. that it's got, that yeah, is absolutely 13, insane. Yeah, that that's that's pretty unique for a 13 year old barrel. I mean, you really you know a lot of people don't realize you have taste receptors in your throat. I still taste the you know the 5906. It's really something. 5906, that, that finish will tuck you into bed tonight. It's going to last so long. No. <laughs> By the way, I actually, the votes are coming that, in you, with uh, buttery. People are really yeah, wanting that buttery, buttery mouthfeel. I actually think that 5614 uh, actually had that in my throat. That's where I got more of a cocoa chocolate mm. after a little bit. Like it came back up and it was a little uh, cocoa-y kind of. That's what I, I really like. That it was even. I mean, a long finish, and then that came back up. So now, yeah. Gary, Gary, Gary Pena uh, just just wrote and said, uh, "Why not both?" I don't think that's an option, but if, <laughs> but uh, but if it is, you know, I can uh, you know we can talk about that. I'm but, in. But um, <laughs> you know that you know that happens with every barrel pick, and I feel I feel sorry for the guys who are. You know, making the the decisions on the barrel, uh, wh wherever it is. When somebody wants two, you're like, ah, I can't because you got this other guy, and then they, they're gonna want two. So, um, you know, Martin but Flores friends, is even saying, it. "I'll take you're the re there, rejects." There's, there's no more. There's no more barrel picks. You're you're kind of like the. I mean, just because you're overdue, uh, everybody's getting a barrel. There, like any 13 year barrel after this will be like a rare and limited. I'm on the. Um, I'm not offering up anymore. There's not to enough, be, to be, you know. To be honest, Fred, Aaron, you're exactly what you said. Those are two totally opposite barrels, but they're both like better than. I mean, that that was. I, I kind of want to blend them now. That's, I just want to say thank. I'm going to. I can. I can to that. Right, that yeah. butteriness up front. Then the the butteriness, it's the finish is just for me, it's nice, it's creamy, but it's got a little bit more tannin, which I'm I am very tannin sensitive, so I can taste it. Mm -hmm. And the other one just got a um, less oak, like a cleaner finish, you know, as far as like that mm -hmm. the heavier, earthier, oaky flavors, and then it's just got all the just candy, cinnamon, spice, and heat. Yeah, that is absolutely <laughs> you know? insane. I mean, that wow. is absolutely insane. To be honest, for a thirteen-year-old barrel, that is absolutely insane. I mean, the nose on number, the you nose guys, on the. You guys should take fifty-six fourteen. Don't worry about it. I'll be okay with fifty-six oh nine over here. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Don't be, uh, we, we don't want to talk to you too much. Aaron might cancel us out and make a new rare and limited tomorrow with both of you. No, he wouldn't do that. No, um, never, yeah. yeah, I think, uh, I, I, I think the, um, that's the way to go. I, I really, you know, the, 
the um, throughout the chat, everybody was going buttery, buttery, buttery. You know, uh, but this is not an easy one. This is not an no. easy one. Here. I, I, I am in fact blending them right now. The the nose on the second one, the higher proof one, has just a great funk. I'm blending. Just a really good, the funk. So, so here's right. the two. Going into this blend, Aaron, my theory on this is right. that uh, the base uh, 5614 would make a great base, and 5906 would make a really good flavoring whiskey. I'll see if I'm right. I'm probably wrong. Mmm. I just dropped the mic now. It's oh, over. Oh, man. Holy shit. That, that's Damn. These two barrels together? Oh, fuck. It's a super barrel. That's making love. Right. How about we do how how um Naren's getting crazy. Say it, Aaron. Just do it. Let's do it. Want. Look, here, here, I'll give you if you want them both blended together <laughs> as like a rare and limited instead of a single barrel pick, we, we could do that. I think I, I, I think um our our supporters would like that. Yeah. I, I would think do that. So. I, I think they would. I think yeah. I would. I would too, because I want one of. Those, I'm going to keep one of the bottles, so we all win. <laughs> Aaron, can we, uh, we all win. <laughs> Cheers. Aaron, can we pick the color of the medallion on it? I think Fred. Yeah, needs to pick I mean, it. usually, usually that would be it's a, a blue one, right? Because it's all the same vintage, so that would okay. be like the Desert blue. Jewel. So it'd be the blue one. Awesome. Nice. Yeah, I mean, I I know people. This, it's like it's so funny. Like people are like, oh, the metals. Oh, why'd you do that? I'm like it's totally pragmatic. I don't know how else to have a bunch of you know the whole thing with the rare and limited was just to get it, not have a specific release date and just have bottles and be like, this is cool. I'm gonna release this to the public. And how do you know what it is? Well, we'll just hang this thing on it instead of having to get a wax, which takes four fucking months. You know, people are like, oh, you put metals in your bottles. Oh, we can do. <laughs> that that is the voice of every naysayer ever. It, it really is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Ooh. Who, do you think, who do you think you are with your medals? Those. I can't remember what someone said. Uh, oh, are those like participation awards because you couldn't win anything. Mm. Which, by the way, uh, all three core expressions just uh, won double gold at San Francisco Well Spirits Competition. This ah, year. congrats. I just found that out today. Thank you. I mean, well done, dude. I mean, to go back to your baseline spirits, all of them, Aaron, are just outstanding. And I think that's one of the things. I mean, you put an uncut, unfiltered in a lineup with pretty much anything, blinds. And I bet yours is coming out in the top two. Uh, Thank you, man. Times. I really appreciate yeah, that. So that's, that's being honest. Just for even uh, all of our members, I've seen that multiply uh, done multiple times, and it, mm-hmm. it comes out. So, well done, man. Yeah, and and Thank I think yeah. I think there's something really. I think there's so there are two places where I have seen like uh, really great things happen to Indiana bourbon after it leaves their premises. Uh, Smooth Ambler uh, in West yep. Virginia, that high elevation. Yep. And then it, where you are, with that really dry climate, high heat, you know, I think there's really something something unique that happens in these other climates, uh, for that extra little bit of aging, that just makes these makes these these bourbons just a, just a touch better. And I really would, um, if if you can do it, if you can do some tests on your on your product uh, prior to you, like so, you get a barrel from MGP or wherever. Right. I'd love for you to do a test before you go through your process and then when, right before you bottle it and, and compare it to something else. Because I'm telling you, I, I really do think that something is happening in the atmosphere in both uh, your facility and at um, Smooth Ambler when they do theirs. I, 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 can, I can tell you undeniably something's happening because, um, you know, there, there's a local place uh, I don't know if they're still around, but they used to distill from scratch and they would get a 48% volume loss in their first year. And when I heard that, I was freaked out. And so every time we get barrels, the truck would show up and be like, dump them, get them in the tank. We're going to lose all the bourbon. And then one summer, 
uh, I ruptured my lower distal bicep tendon. This is when I was doing everything myself, and I couldn't do anything for, for three months. And that was during the summer with uh, 5% humidity, you know, and at the end of the summer when I was able to do the barrel fix with Total Wine, all the barrels were creamy. And I shouldn't say creamier, but they had, you know, as far as mouthfeel, not flavor. They didn't have a creamier flavor, but they had a, they had a thicker mouthfeel. And they were more complex. The rye spice had come back. And uh, I was like, well, shit. I guess I'll keep them here, you know. I won't... Now, I have noticed that, like, the young ones, right, they do, uh, they don't age favorably. They, like, get too much volume loss. But, like, the older they are and the more that that, you know, alcohol is really kind of sealed, the, the wood, those mm-hmm. seem to do better here. And I even had one barrel, that summer 1942 barrel, it was terrible and over-oaked, and it sat for four years, and the oak went away. Wow. And nobody knows why. <laughs> and it was like 136 proof to it. Yeah, that was pretty cool. I like that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so you 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 no doubt you're tapped into all the brokers you see all this uh, you see all this uh you know older kentucky bourbon coming up on the market a lot of us being brought in right. back from overseas what do you, what do you think about like um the source game right now because there's a lot of a, a lot of probably going to be one release bottles you know come coming into the market in the next like six months and oh, um, yeah. it's see it's just it just seems overwhelming for me as like a, as like a reviewer because I know most of it's the same stuff and and I've right. and I've and I've tasted these things and they're all very similar. But what's your um, what's your thought on the where where that market is headed because it's it's very different than what it was 10 years ago. You mean hmm. as far as like how it'll affect us or like what other people are going to be doing or uh, I um, guess just any way you want to approach that. I, I really do. How do you I think mean, it'll I affect you? I, well, I think it's favorable for us because I don't think anybody's doing what I'm doing. Um, you know, we contract MGP to lay down new barrels. I make sure everything's racked in the old warehouses. I have a full understanding of the warehouses. I'm always uh, making strategic moves for the future as far as what floors and what warehouses we rack everything in. Mm-hmm. I do have 200 palletized barrels that I had to buy because we were offered an exclusive deal on uh, 1,400 barrels that had been on hold and nobody could buy. And then, and I either had to get them all <laughs> or like the price was not worth doing. But um, so yeah, you know, I, I and and then when I bought all those barrels, we bought every single six year they had. All of a sudden, there was brands that were like, "Well, what do I do now?" And and it would get back to me. I'm like, what do you mean? What are they? And they were just going in and buying 10 or 12 barrels at a time. And I'm like, you know, people always ask me when I'm going to do a rye. I'm like, when we have enough money to buy, like, you know, hundreds of barrels and start laying it down so it's consistent. And, and so there's a future for it. I don't want to be in a position where I release something because I bought, like, 20 barrels. And now it's like, oh, can I get any more or what's going Or I have to wait four years until I can do it again. So, um, I, you know, my personality, I'm very obsessive. And so I want to learn all the warehouses and I want to pay, you know, I pay attention to what everything's doing. And when I pay inventory, it takes three hours because I'm, you know, I don't have enough space to fit more than like a, a truckload's like 88 to 90 barrels. And we're, we're blowing through that like every, <laughs> like every two weeks now. And so I, I have to pull trucks before we've even figured out like, even before the one before that showed up. So I'm always trying to plan everything in my head as far as like what time of the month is it? We're doing uncut or small batch or straight. And I'm like looking at all these different warehouses and the floors and okay, I know how this tastes. I know how that age is there. I mean, there are always surprises, especially because a lot of times the cooperages change, you know, MGP doesn't make their own barrels. So you might be pulling stuff out of warehouse G off the fourth floor for, you know, for us, we've been doing this, you know, since, uh, 2012, I mean, only pulling inventory for six years, but I can be pulling that stuff for five years and all of a sudden they go from Speyside to McGinnis and everything tastes totally different because it's a to- yeah. totally different Cooper. But for the most part, I, I can figure it out. And I, I don't think anybody's doing that because I, I, 
I, I mean, I don't know. I, I try to be positive and, and, but when I see a lot of brands, I just feel like they're, they're trying to cash in and they're just, they're sourcing bourbon, not with a, a long-term goal because they don't have one because they just want to pump out the cases and get bought out and move on to, you know, and, and, ca- and, and, and make money. Um, and yeah. not, not all of them, of course. I mean, there's obviously, I'm not, I'm not like the, oh, hey, we're the only one, you know, I mean, there's lots of people that are about the craft and sourcing is, is, I mean, for me, I can't, the, the, with the volume we're doing and the price I get a new barrel from MGP for, I can't, I can't do it myself. I, I don't even know if I could buy the wood for that price, you know? Yeah. And that's why everything's so affordable. Um, Let me ask you this. And, at, at what point do yeah. all the small people decide to like go create their own production? You mean to collectively? Yeah, in this I mean, industry. That's what, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like at, at, at a certain point, people are like, "You know what? I can't get what I need. I can't produce it. So maybe we should go build a factory." I don't know how the that being done collect work. You would have to get some. You'd have to get like some people that were really uh, evolved. And, you know, it's a cutthroat business, and I've had brands try my brand. You know, I, I've I've had to switch distributors because there was a brand in that house that was trying to ax me out. So, yeah, you know, you're talking about a bunch of guys getting together and 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 create something that. I don't. I don't know how realistic that is. I mean, I could be wrong. I could be jaded and uh, too cynical. You know. I mean, I can approach but, that a little bit, Eric. You know, the thing is, is like, it's very difficult. It's very difficult for the switch. Uh, you know, Woodenville is a great example. Uh, have done it. You know, done it well. Um, but uh, you know, it's fucking hard to make whiskey, and I think that's what a lot of people don't get. And I think yeah. what, what Aaron is doing, you know, he's he's straight up, you know, earning his craft as, as like a blender man. You know, he's 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 doing it, you know, blending and and uh, and then there's something special about what goes on in Nevada. And to be honest with you, I don't know if if like your state would allow you to use the amount of water that would be required, you know, to do the well, volume you're doing. There's no license that would allow me to distill on the level that we're doing as far as volume. You could get a craft distiller's license, but we've we've exceeded what that would be. You know, it's uh, yeah. And by the way, well, I and, mean, yeah, and the water <laughs> like to humidify the warehouse. You know, it's like people are like, why don't you just build a warehouse and humidify? I'm like, yeah, screw poor people. They don't need water. We'll just pump that lake dry. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I don't. I, I, I digress. <laughs> I, I'm a civil engineer, so I, 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 I know about water and like taking it out of the ground and things in places like Florida and Texas and things like that. But at, at some point, like, like if you look at the history of bourbon, like within within Kentucky alone, I think there was like it. I think there was close to like a thousand distilleries at one time. I mean. Granted, they were small scale and they were kind of wiped right. out because of prohibition, but it was almost like a side effect of, you know, the whole farm procedure slash, you know, it was, it was kind of like a thing that, you know, was a byproduct of the farm production. And if you have all these things right. that are produced and they're going well, to yeah, trash, I mean, that, that's the history of, of alcohol in this country, you know, the green distill it and make something out of it you know so the grain does before your grain goes bad and use it as sort of commerce and things like that yeah so i put it out to the community like uh hey anyone has a question because we're about to wrap up here aaron's got a you know got barrels to roll and um <laughs> I, muscle, I don't i don't do that muscle <laughs> muscles to tear and hernias to make uh, but uh you know we, we do have some good questions on, in yeah. Will will you meet like you know if if you have a fan coming into tan, town will you will you meet them for a drink? I mean, I I ideally I'd like to. I just don't have any time. You know. What if so what if what if they get a special room at the Win, 
and they, they get, you know, hire the right people to be in there. There's illegal drugs <laughs> and a tiger. Are you and a tiger? Well, you know, maybe man, maybe it's uh, maybe it's not a tiger. It's a uh, let's say. Are you uh, asking a, for a yourself? Mountain, or a mountain lion. For, for... It sounds like a movie. Like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I'm just trying to I'm just trying to help my friend Greg Bradshaw out here in the chat. He's he's wanting to meet you for a drink. Can are, is can people visit your distillery? That, and then they the, will be able to in the new space. September, October, we're going to be in the new location. Uh, we close escrow on Monday, start tenant improvements immediately, and uh, and we'll finally be able to do tours and have a tasting room and, and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, now, we've gotten a lot of uh, comments here from people who live in, like, uh, control states, uh, like Virginia and Pennsylvania, uh, saying they can't Virginia, your, we're on the special order list. You're, you're, out, you are in Virginia. Are you in Pennsylvania? Yeah. No, not in Pennsylvania. Okay, not yet. Uh, what about Indiana? Uh, Indiana is like so. Once we move, we're gonna have a fully automated bottling line, and uh, we'll be able to expand into more states. It's just right now, I, I can't keep up with the eleven markets we're in, and I don't, I don't want there to be any negativity. So I don't want to like. I don't want to not to be able to supply everybody and then <laughs> and then go into another state and they're like, oh, cool, thanks, you know. So, uh, but once we get in the new space, have a you know, because we're it's crazy what we're doing out of our tiny little thirty nine hundred square foot space with no automation, all manpower. What? I mean, yeah, it's nuts. My house is like four thousand square feet. Yeah, well, my yeah, my house is bigger than the distillery for sure. It's not so everything's a Tetris mad scramble, um, but once once we're in the new space, uh, you know, we'll have, uh, fully on the bottling cool. line. Yeah. We'll have the ability to bottle, you know, like uh, whether if you want to talk nine liter cases, two hundred fifty thousand nine liter cases, five hundred thousand five liter cases, it'll. And that's like just seven days a week, eight hour shifts. So that's when we can really start expanding and doing things like that. And again, like you're talking about, like people asking anybody, nobody understands what we're doing. Like as far as, because every, everything sells out so fast and, and it's cool because it's now it's real, you know, like when it was barrels and things like that, everybody's like, Oh, you sold so many barrels. Aren't you happy? I'm like, no, this isn't real. Like, look at what these guys are doing with these barrel picks or they're taking pictures of them. They're not drinking them, you know, but like when everybody's buying the entry level and coming back for more, that's real. That's, you know, because like you always, I'm always afraid of the, you know, the hype, you know, there's so much hype. It's like, ah, ah yeah, I'm always worried, like if somebody tries this, are they going to like it? Is it going to live up to the hype? Is the hype temporary? Are we going to die? And because uh, I want to be doing this for a long time. And and now it's cool because it's real. Like people are buying it and they're enjoying it and they're, and they're coming back for more. It's, it's and, and that's why like even like san francisco i only submitted the the three core expressions you know i didn't do any of the barrels or rare limited because that felt like kind of cheap like oh cool this one a metal but you can't get it ha ha you know it's really about the like the stuff that everyone can afford and and is readily available and that's that's sort of my goal is to have you know especially with the entry level stuff have have a superior product that anyone can afford and doesn't feel bad about drinking and sharing with their friends and and uh, well, all, you know, all of them are like that. But well, on, on that note, gentlemen, I want to I'm going to propose a toast here to Aaron and well, thank you, know, you, Fred. I really appreciate you coming on and um, oh man, um, my hanging with us. Like you kidding? This is a privilege for me. I, I really appreciate you having me. It means a lot. So I in in like and I think you're I think you're great for bourbon. I think you're great with what you're doing, and it's it's a uh, uh, it's a it's a fun time in bourbon. And and I always I always like I always like to you know have people who are real. Come, I don't interview a lot of distillers or people in the business uh, on my YouTube channel. <laughs> you know, I'm I'm mostly I mostly just interview like musicians and stuff and. Uh, you know, because like I, I've been doing this for 15 years, um, interviewing people and, and like there's so many, 
so many just like uh, comments from distillers. It's just like dribbled up, you know, marketing speak, you know, that Mark, was, yeah, marketing bullshit. And, and, yeah. and so like, I like real people, you know, and, and, and this is like, you know, YouTube is still new for me, but, um, I, it, it, I, I like to have real people in this, in this area. If I'm writing a story, it's a little different, but right. it, like, this is, um, you know, for me to have you here and like to chat with you, you know, the barrel picks is the gravy, but really the, the joy for me was getting to talk to you oh, and I, and I, and well, I look, you, and man. I look forward to like sitting down with you and, uh, having a, uh, having a, ha- having this in person, you know? You don't even have to bring a tiger. Or, or, uh... <laughs> have, well, have you, has your blend been sitting in your glass? Uh, well, it didn't make it very long, so. <laughs> I drank mine already. <laughs> I, I'm, going, I'm going back to the other one. I'll, I'll, blend, I'll blend it back. I'll get it back going. And then um, I, I will. So uh, I'll, I'll weigh the barrels, and, and I'll give you a. Um... I'll let you know what kind of case count we can expect to get out of both of them. And if, if 5906 is as low as I think it is, since you guys really like the buttery one, we'll take – if 5906 is less than 5614, you know, we can talk about it. I'll let you know what, what's going on. But who knows? Maybe we could do a blend of those two equally, and then what's left of 614 we can – bottle it on its own you know yeah and my staff is gonna love that it's gonna be so but my I, I just, uh, say... <laughs> hey guys we gotta we gotta we gotta pause production of cranking all this stuff out because <laughs> well you know what i i will i will make it up for them i i will i will send i'll send signed books or something to make it better or i could i could break out some of my yeah. old ra- really rare vintage stuff and send them some of that Oh, but, um, it's all good, man. It, it's just funny, you know, like, uh, we, we, I, I think I did a video on it where people are like, um, you know, when I did the five-year rare and limited, and everybody's like, oh, is this what it comes to? You do like five-year barrels? It's like, yeah, yeah, because I make so much money on a five-year barrel. It takes all fucking day to write on the labels. I could do three and a half pallets of uncut in that amount of time. You know how much money I make on that versus like a. Fu- I'm doing it because I think it's cool and I think you people are gonna like it. And and guess what the distributors say? Oh, cool, rare and limited. I really need you know those pallets of straight bourbon, and you're spending time bottling rare. You know, it's like, uh, it's just funny, man. It's funny like how how the world is you now. Like unnecessarily Again. negative. Some yeah. You know, the, the, the beauty would be if you could sell direct to consumers. I, we, we're going to, we have it set, we partner with Bar Cart. I mean, so it's technically not direct, so I can't control inventory or things like that. But all the retailers in their network have to agree to a retail price. Mm-hmm. So there's no gouging. I mean, unfortunately, it's based on like retailers in New York who are getting hammered with shipping costs and taxes. So I think uncut's like 75 on there and everything's a little elevated, but uh, hopefully in the new space, we because it's four acres, so we're going to find a way to work around the Nevada laws that forbid us from doing retail mm. in a well, secret way. There's uh, the secrets shall be deleted later, so they are not told. <laughs> And the Nevada a- ABC shall not find you. But uh, everybody's been asking, like, how you can find this. Um, you know, so a little bit of a backstory is I had a whiskey club. Um, it got dissolved. Uh, I do have a YouTube membership community as well. But anybody who was in that whiskey club previously, if they signed up to get, like, my information about my barrel picks, uh, then they will, they will, they will get that. Um, and also, if people in the in the YouTube community had signed up previously, you know, then they will get it. But really, I, I'm trying to qualify these things. I'm going away from having like a a pay to get the tier to buy. Uh, I'm going away from that, and um, and I'm going more toward, you know, just just trying to support those good people who've been supporting me. Like, you know, like 
Nate and Eric and and you know it's it you know what I do is like I lost everything in a year a, a year ago um, I lost my music festivals my 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 magazine I was no longer going to be a part of that uh, I mean I lost ninety percent of my income in a day or two days and um, and so like this these these barrel picks are kind of part of my joy that I can give back to people who've been supporting me so. Uh, we do my re my retailer now is uh, a seal box, so you'll get to, oh yeah I you'll get to to work with them. So, but this is you know for me this is a little bit about giving back to the folks who have been supporting me, you know through through the years and sometimes it's been a bumpy ride, but we we're all on it together in the uh, oh, you know man. going to the yeah, great bourbon clouds. To that. I can I can, <laughs> I can relate to the bumpy ride. You know it's. Um... It's a, it's, it's crazy when those, but sorry, I didn't even finish the sentence there. I just started thinking about all the bumpy rides and I had to stop thinking about them. I mean, but, it's, uh... everybody, that's the thing, Aaron, is people just see success, you know, where you are now and like how everybody wants your whiskey, but they don't see all those little bitty things, you know, that took no. to get there. And, and that stuff, I mean, that's all I think about. Yeah. And I mean, and it, it, I mean, there, there's. Uh, ends of the spectrum, right? There's day, me having to unload a truck uh, and in the, you know, 114 degrees by myself, uh, you know, in two hours. So we don't get paid a bunch where I've got to like jump in and out of it. Cause I pulled a, we didn't have a loading dock. So every time I, you know, pull the pallet to the edge with the pallet jacket i gotta jump out of the truck get in the forklift pick it up drop it jump back in the truck to things like everyone telling me i'm an idiot you know when uh, i wanted to do small batch and they're like no you need to have your thing with uh no age on it be like palatable barely and put your eight year in a separate bottle with an age statement and i was like i want to do this this is different otherwise what am i doing like what am I contributing to the to the market if I'm not this tastes better to me than anything else and then it, it's like so why why even do it make up a bullshit story and everybody want me to make up bullshit stories buy a barrel from Kentucky so I could blend <laughs> it with my stuff and put uh, a blend of straight bourbons take you know aged in uh, you know distilled in Indiana off the back label it's like no this is the I don't want skeletons I just want pure about this I don't want to be worrying about being discovered or anything and. And, um, and man, it was some hard times for me and my business partner, Jonathan, you know, cause he's writing the checks and it's my responsibility to make shit happen. And he's like, what the fuck's going on here? You know, and it's like, yeah, I'm trying, I'm trying as hard as I can, you know? And yeah, it took 10 years, you know? I mean, everything really started happening in like in the past year. I mean, there was years there where it was just like, oh, getting hustled. You know, we got hustled by experts who get, charged lots of fucking money that we didn't really have to give us advice that was wrong mm. you know it's uh and, mm. I, and again like the story i already told i had a a large you know supplier i won't name try to kill my brand in arizona and uh it's just like man we're just like a little guy it will, you know we're bigger than little guys now but back then i was like okay what do you you you're gonna lose Egyptian linen fucking uh, napkins on your private jet because of the, <laughs> the 88 cases we sold instead of your stuff? Like, what do you... <laughs> you know, it's tough, Dude, I, man. I absolutely love this story. And Aaron, I love you. And I feel like I really... Oh, thank you. ...that on the shoulders of two giants here. And it's, and it's just great to hear this. So, I mean... Oh, thanks, man. Dude, it is so awesome. Because that, that's what people love is, is, is exactly what we went through. And we've all gone through it. And I'm so happy that you guys are succeeding. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, well, you just got to. Go, go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I was just saying, you know, it's like, fortunately, with age, you know, you realize everything's fleeting. Uh, even the good stuff, unfortunately, you know, mm -hmm. it's like, and... You just have to take the attitude. You can never take an attitude of being, at least in my opinion. You know, maybe I don't have it all figured out. But for me, I never take 
attitude of being a victim. It's always like, what can I learn from this to make sure it doesn't happen again or, or to do it better next time or whatever. And you just have to stay, I don't mean to get all biblical, but you know, it's like Job, you know, it's like you never, it's like you just never, there's no limit to human suffering. You need to keep perspective and understand that your problems could be a lot worse than they are. And, and there's always, as long as you, you stay strong and you don't have a support system, things like that, you can always, you can always fight through it, you know? That's right. That's right. That's well, it, and, and consider this YouTube community of mine uh, a support system for all, you know, with this, uh, with this great thing of bourbon, as well as Nate's community. And, you know, it, it just, it, it, it is all one feeding beast of just people wanting to get together and have a good time and chat about life oh, yeah. and what have you. Yeah. And uh, livers be yeah. damned sometimes. And hey, you know what? <laughs> Hopefully we're back to in person and big events. Absolutely. And getting people back together in person oh. and uh, doing what this is all about. Looking people in the eyes, yeah, shaking hands, wait. and sharing a whiskey fellowship. Well, I got news yeah. for you. I got a few live events coming up. So excited oh, yeah. about them. So what? excited. I can't wait. Yeah. Can't wait. Aaron, Aaron, you'll like this. After this, I saved a half ounce of the blend. Going out, gonna smoke a Liga Pravada, get a good cigar on my patio and my rocking chair, man. I'm gonna hit this blend. So right I know you like cigars, my friend. That's awesome. Oh, they're my they're my friends. Cigars I don't know if they like me as much as I like them because. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, gentlemen, let's let's we've been we've been at this for an hour and twenty minutes now, and I, I thank you so much for your time. It's been a great time, Fred. And it, it, so it's been fun. great Thank for me because so I got for having me. Absolutely. It's been great to drink your whiskey, for God's sake. It's amazing. Mm. Oh, thank you. Uh, and, and I know, like, it, it, you know, it couldn't be easy to part ways with, um, you know, with those 13 year old barrels. So I'm thankful. Oh, no, I was just giving thankful. you shit, man. I'm just, I'm just giving you a hard time. I love, I love it. I, I, I'm, there's no person I'd rather have it, and especially, you know, with the guys you have here. And you know everybody appreciates it, and I'm sure, and and the story you told about how you're going to share it with other. I mean, that's what it's all about, you know. Absolutely. It's, it's, yeah. It, it's honestly, it's like I get bummed out now because, like, when I find cool stuff and I want to do it as a rare and limited or something like that, it's like I just I, I see all this shit going on the secondary market. It's it's like, well, if I if that, is that what's going to happen? Is no one going to get it? I'd rather go to you because I know that you're going to hand pick the people that get it. And no one that you give this to is going to sell it, you know, then they'd be out. So well, that's, right. the, that's the hope. I can't trust Eric, you know. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> we, started, we started on the bottle that I had. You that's true. I, I drank I just had to get. I just had to mess with you. <laughs> <laughs> I just had to mess with you. But, uh, I, I appreciate everyone's time. It's great hanging out, and um, this was this was streamed live on the YouTube channel. So thank for thank you to everybody who tuned in and listened to our shenanigans. Uh, if you haven't yet, click like. It helps with the algorithm. Click subscribe. I'd appreciate it. You know, if you want to learn about whiskey facts and history, I love to educate people. And if you don't want that, that's okay. Thanks for watching. I appreciate you being here. But everybody, uh, close out on your side. Tell where people can find you. Go ahead, Aaron. You're the you're the big show here. Tell us where they can oh. find you. Well, let, let's see. Uh, so right now, if you go to NevadaDistilling.com, like you said, we partnered with with uh, Bar Cart, and um, you can buy through through them. And everything's pretty close to retail. Uh, I don't think they ship everywhere, and the states we're distributed in right now are California. Let me see if I get this right: California, Nevada, Arizona, uh, Illinois, New York, New Jersey, Georgia, Arkansas. Because I fucking love those guys. People are like, "Why'd you go to Arkansas?" I was like, "I just had a great conversation with the Steelers. I'm not doing big corporations anymore." Um, and uh, Tennessee. And Texas, oh my God, Texas, man, Texas was a game changer. Oof, those, those guys are. I don't think I don't I don't think down. they drink water in Texas. I think they just drink straight bourbon. I don't, I don't either. Like people, Good for them. people, 
Yeah, people message me like, when's this stuff coming to Texas? Like, it's been there a year. Like, we need more. I'm like, I, I ship so much. So. <laughs> it's awesome. Nate, how can people but, uh, find yeah. you? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. I, cut, I cut you off, Aaron. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. no, no, no. I was just going to say, of course, in the Instagram, Smoke Wagon Bourbon. On, on the old Instagram, I'd say that's where most people find us. Only Instagram. 100% worth the follow. Yeah, 100% worth the follow, Aaron. Indeed. You got to watch oh, what he's doing. Man. He's, he's great. So Sometimes yes, he'll come out you with a sleeveless shirt. Or something. <laughs> you know, and yeah. you, you'll see him in a sleeveless shirt. I'm like, his doctor's saying, that's fat? Whoa, what am I? Hey. <laughs> it's just going to have a, it's, it's easy because you, if you work out and you have a big chest, you can get a bigger shirt and they, they hide your stomach. That's, that's the secret. <laughs> Fred, you can uh, you can find us at 5280whiskey.com. We've got our website there, but on Instagram, 5280whiskey. Uh, we're, we're not open to public on uh, Facebook, but uh, that's where we're at. And cheers. What are you doing uh, in private on Facebook there, Nate? You, uh, yeah, what's well, going on over there? That's members right. only. We, you know, we had it open to everybody, but then everybody thought they were a member, and uh, we created – Mess just headaches. So yeah, we we with Instagram. You want to hit you're us. saying, Fred? Fred, I know what you're saying over there. The razzles, <laughs> those razzles. Nah, <laughs> nothing bad. No, no, we don't do anything on the secondary market. We don't sell. In fact, I can say one thing about fifty two eighty whiskey. Nate, I'm only Aaron, joking, don't kid man. about that. Don't kid about. But one thing I can say is you'll never, you will not see our. We've done over fifty private barrels Ooh. in. It's very rare that you would ever see anything come up on secondary. We we track that. By, we take that very serious. By the way, I, I've been laughing so much that my eyes are watering now. This has been fun. <laughs> well, been fun. Aaron, Aaron, you're gonna like, laugh at this. It's come in in the chat uh, from Devin Patel. Uh, in his spare time, Nate is a robocaller, so he's apparently like uh, robocalling people. <laughs> That's true. That's how I uh, make my living. Um, if you need anything about your auto warranty, I can take care of that. Um, I, I usually did make about a thousand a calls a minute. And I did that as a job for. Uh, uh, I I did a uh, what was it? Um, I mean, there was no robos back then, but uh, it was what is it? What was it called for the old people? I fall and I can't get up. Um, oh, uh, shoot. Uh, the, the, heck was it, the, emer gonna, the emergency this. chain thing. No, yeah, but it's uh, I call old. I used to call you're talking about the clapper trying to sell, sell the call alerts or something. Yeah, what is that? Life alert, the, the me life, life alert, alert. <laughs> yeah, medical life bracelets. Alert. Yeah. yeah, life alert. Yeah, we didn't even say it. I'd be like, oh, you know, maybe you've seen a commercial where the woman falls and she can't get up because all I want to do is go to the beach all day. So I could, be, I'd, I was pretty good at it. I only do it like a couple hours a day and. I didn't realize that we were hustling old people. Probably some of the bumps in my life were because punishment, <laughs> punishment for having that job, <laughs> karmically. <laughs> Aaron, I too, I too was a uh, um, uh, a telemarketer in college. Yeah, I was selling uh, credit card insurance. Wow. Right on. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we had we had a big room. And I, I'll tell you, man, it was a great place to, to, to hook up with, um, you know, <laughs> with people of my age. It was great. Yeah. And, well, that's the uh, call center was the tender of the 80s. Congratulations. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, I, I remember one time I made a call and, like, this guy, the son picked up. was like, she's on a fixed income. She can't be buying this. What are you doing? And I was like. Am I a bad person? Am I being? Am I doing bad things with this job? I thought I was helping old people. <laughs> yeah, oh, man. Middle management sold you a bill of goods there. Yeah, yeah. Eric, well, did you ever do telemarketing? Uh, Fred, I was never into marketing. I've ne I really don't have anything to sell. I have an By the way, page. you're the you're the only non-bearded person here. Oh. <laughs> I just realized that. That is a good point. 
He's yeah. got and, and Nate, he's got the good it's dimple. He doesn't have a fat. Face. He does have that chin he's though. Need a beard. Yeah, he's. If I, but, if I didn't that's... have a fat face. I I'd shave too. <laughs> and he's got that dimple. You know, like if you have that dimple in your chin, it's like against the law yeah. to have a beard. It's like I have. Yeah. Oh, I used to have one. I used to have one, and they got filled in with. You know, <laughs> yeah. Right. Fat. <laughs> Doctor said, now, got, "Now I've got the three chins. <laughs> Some of the fat from the hernia area went straight to my chin." <laughs> anyway, Eric, <laughs> this is the longest closeout I've ever had. <laughs> It's funny because my daughter told me everybody in Disney has a big chin and a dimple today. All the villains. So that's a good point. Know. Yeah, uh, Pete does. Yeah, they all, all of do. them have a big chin and dimples. She's like, you got a big chin and dimples. Yeah, well, maybe I was cast to be a villain. But um, as far as like my Instagram, it's the Bourbon Sherpa. Um, I do. A lot of stuff on Airbnb, but I don't really advertise it. It's just Bourbon Trail. Um, you know, if you're coming to Kentucky, you can pretty much figure out where we're at. Um, and then as far as, you know, my future plans, I'm working on a couple hotels and things like that. I'm working on a hotel called the Woodford Hotel in downtown Versailles. Um, but really, I enjoy just hanging out with you guys. And I, and I appreciate every minute of this because I feel like, I'm hanging out with like genuine people and, you know, on the shoulder of, of giants. And like I said earlier, and so are you saying you know, I'm I fat? Like, are you saying I'm fat? Uh, with the giant comment. Big bones, I got, I got big bones. I'm, I'm hanging yeah, <laughs> yeah. guys with grow beards. <laughs> <laughs> well, Fred and I ate breakfast and I had about three breakfasts myself. So he knows I don't miss a meal. That's for damn uh, sure. That that boy can put it down. I tell you, I got a, one of each on the menu. He he was like, uh, my wife's not around. I'm gonna pig out. And I was, yep. <laughs> Nobody could tell me not to order everything. <laughs> yeah. So that that's about it. I just like hanging out with you guys. So I appreciate every minute and everybody fun, in the man, chat who's sure. listening. I think you're gonna get like it. Honestly, this is gonna I be could... one of the most unbelievable bottles. And Aaron, I, I appreciate you. You know, giving these barrels out because I mean it's it's like this is like rare. I mean, so awesome. I yeah, appreciate I've been a huge smoke wagon fan for about I guess three or four years now, and you know oh, to see you, you doing this is amazing. Well, it's yeah. a big deal. Yeah. Man. This is a real big deal. Yeah, very very excited about this, and it you know to me it's like um, it, it, it's an honor to show your you know craftsmanship as well oh. and. And Shit, thanks, Fred. And if, and if I thought you sucked, I'd tell you. So well, you know, that, I appreciate that. You know, and I'll always I'll always be critical. So if I ever taste a bottle that you know I don't like of your stuff, you know I will tell you. But like that's I, fine, man. That hasn't happened. I'll tell you that. I can handle I can handle that. I can handle people being critical about the flavor. The old, there's only uh, two things that I get crazy. I just get so nuts. Obviously, one is when somebody breaks their bond, their word to me, and mm -hmm. the other is like when people bring my character into question. Like I just do all these things, like everything's positive, I'm trying to do, and then like someone accuses me of like uh, misleading the consumer, things like that. I'm like, that you're 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 bringing my character into question, and I know that in the the digital like, like social media and everything, people just say shit, and you know, but. No, I, I get it, man. My age, I get it. I get like it. Like when, if I would talk, you know, look, it's not like it was always me going after people that talked shit about me when I was younger. I mean, I got fucking hit in the face a couple times and I was like, hey, maybe I shouldn't have such a big mouth. Maybe I shouldn't talk shit about people because there's consequences, you know, I don't, <laughs> it's because that hurt. I don't want, I don't want that to happen again. And it's my fault for being a shit, you know? And uh, and now it's just like there's no consequence to anything. They should bring back dueling. You know, somebody talks shit about you, you challenge them to duel. That'll and that is the branding yeah. of Smoke Wagon. <laughs> Aaron is actually you know, the two pistols. It's all about just bringing back dueling. Yep, bringing back dueling. Yep. 
Well, if that if, if we uh, if we brought back dueling, I just would I would I would campaign for it being a musket because oh uh, yeah for sure I I don't want it to be like a, a semi-automatic because you know my gun would jam probably and like fucking Glock <laughs> shit oh he's got a Smith and Wesson oh. <laughs> Yeah, definitely not swords, because I, I, I don't have any skills. I, I would, I like the musket. The musket's cool. The musket would one work. One shot, one chance. Yeah. That's it. And and also, if you get hit by the musket, I mean, you, there's a good chance you'll live. Unless it went yeah, through your eye. Yeah, with modern medicine and mm. everything, you're yeah. probably going to be okay. It's going to hurt like a motherfucker, though. Oh, mm. yeah. You won't talk shit. If you're on the receiving shit talking, I bet you'll think twice about just... Saying a bunch of nonsense, you can't back up on social media. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, it's a it's a common occurrence today that that it happens, and and like yeah. you know, you, you just I I I, 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 I would I would encourage you to to channel something to 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 find a way to let it escape. I get I get a lot of it, you know, and it's and you know if you take a look at find your favorite band and then go in their comments. I remember right. going, I, I remember going through and looking through Metallica's comments and I'm like, holy shit. I mean, these guys are following. They're one of the million followers and millions of followers. And they're just like talking shit on Metallica and like really badly. Yeah. And it was just no. like, it, it just, it's it just, it is the, it, it is what it is today. And it's yeah. not anything we can ever change, but what we can do is sit down in a room when we can and enjoy the company. And I would say, like, you know, um, you've got a lot of fans, man. Focus, focus. I know. It, as as it's, Joe Maglioco cool. told me, focus on the positive. You have a yeah. lot of I, positive. I, I just was having this conversation with my business partner where I was like, I don't understand. It's like there could be 30,000 pop. I'm like, thanks, guys. Thanks. This is amazing. And it really does affect me. Like, it, re- I mean, in a good way. It's just, it's really amazing. And and then it'll be like, one comment. I'm like, find that fucker. I'm going to fucking spend the rest of my life trying to find out who this guy is. And he doesn't even have a picture on his, on his profile. But I'm going to find him. Oh, and, yeah. <laughs> you know, is like, he Liam Neeson? Yeah. What, why are you doing this? Like, who cares? There's all this positive stuff, you know? Well, like, you, put a lot, you, you, you put a lot of hard work into it. I get yeah. it. Yeah. And I, I, I have the benefit of having, um, you know, a decade's worth of uh, book reviews. And right, and uh, so I have a I have an appreciation for that that same that same thing, and and like it it is not ever easy to deal with haters or, or criticism, but at some point there comes a you know, maybe maybe that's where the fat helps. You know, you get that thick skin. <laughs> well, you know? I, I I can I, yeah. I mean, it's like what what going back to what we're talking about. You're like if you don't like something. You're t- I can handle like legitimate criticism. I don't expect it to be everybody's favorite. Everyone has a different palate. Maybe I screwed up, but my palate was off. And there's a batch that's out there that like wasn't my best. I, I can I can handle that stuff. It's it's you know, it's the I don't know when things have a certain tone or you know you know what I'm saying. It's when like people are it's being not... douchebags. When people are you know being douchebags. Yeah. 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 Yep. Yeah. It and would actually drive me. Yeah, yeah. So it's the pros and cons of making it all personal and being the face of the brand. You know, the mm-hmm. pros yeah. are <laughs> exponential. It's like a part of the bourbon community. I have this huge support system. I get to meet you. I get to talk to uh, you know Nate, Nate and Eric. I get to have all these amazing interactions and this mm-hmm. incredible life and doing doing this amazing thing. And then the the cons are when people attack the brand. They're, you know, they're generally attacking me. They're not just Thing, like smoke wagon saying Aaron, Aaron's this or Aaron's that. And I'm like, ah, <laughs> you know, no. say it to my face. <laughs> and it's like, no, I don't care. It's cool, whatever, you know. Just don't I'm damage gonna, the hat maybe. when you do it. You know, uh, when you get no. when you get in that scuffle. The hats like <laughs> the hats like the ascot. You gotta take care of it. You two deal oh, with yeah. that on a much higher scale. The thing that drives me nuts is when People go after the new whiskey drinkers. 
the new people coming into it, the new people that are enthusiastic and the trolls oh, tear yeah. them down as they're trying to, to learn. And yeah, that dri- that's one of the reasons why we created our society. It drives me nuts because that's, that's the new, the new generation of people coming in and being a part of the, uh, you know, getting on the train. And, uh, yeah. you know, I hate that, man, because it's you got to help people support people on their journey. So that's, a, that's important. Yeah, that's I, important. I agree. You know, it's um, and, and all you're going to do is make people not want to, you know, uh, be a part of it. Like if they see yeah. that everyone's neck, you know, they're not going to want to get into bourbon. And then they'll start drinking flavored rum or something. And it'll be vodka, like, maybe. It'll vodka, be Fred. Tragic. It'll be tragic. Yeah, vodka, Fred. Mm-hmm. Fucking double, just dis- <laughs> quadruple distilled. Hey, by the way, <laughs> what does everybody think about the new mic tonight? Does everybody like the mic? Anybody? Sounded any, good, man. Any comments on how sounds it sounds? Does it sound good? Can't see it. Sounded good. All right. Yeah. It's sounds nice good. to not have the mic in your face, to be honest. Do you like looking at my face, Eric? Uh, yeah. I, mean, I think I somebody in the comments asked the face, Fred. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think somebody in the comments asked if I could have more fifty two eighty whiskeys on my screen. So uh, next time I'm thinking I'm gonna plan on making actually, sure that I the whole, the actually, whole space. So kiss my ass, whoever made that comment. I, I meant yeah. to I meant to tell you I meant to tell you, Nate, that you have a yeah. lot of white space there. And yeah, you, you yeah. should totally you like to broaden that, that out a little bit, you know. This is where we do all our events because we've had to go to damn virtual, which I absolutely it's not my thing. Uh, but uh, I look forward to uh, in person events where I speak less and let the experts talk. So, yeah, for sure. Well, I mean, okay. not everyone can have a 10 year old broken printer that they are too lazy <laughs> to get rid of. <laughs> so, you know. And Eric, dude, I don't know if you can get any more bases on your shelf behind you, bro. <laughs> My wife's decorations. Here we are. All our Airbnbs. Here, here, here we are. Here we are getting all critical on each other here with the with the whiskey background, the bases, uh-huh. busted up printers. I love it, man. All right, I think this is. Uh, I think this is our our close, so we can all. Uh, get back to uh, more bourbon in uh, right. in private, or however you're going to do it, or whatever is up next. <laughs> Eric's going to go shopping for Blantons, um, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> why I'm gonna... I the fall guy? <laughs> Everybody's going to have a fall guy, you know. You know, it it works out. But uh, <laughs> next time he'll have a beard. I guarantee it. <laughs> Yeah, Eric, join the program, bro. But, I gotta uh, see myself fat. But I, I, I want to say, like, I just, I loved having you all. Uh, I'm so excited about this, uh, about this pick, and what is to come because we don't know where it's going to land. Uh, it's still going to be a bit of a mystery. But all those who've been supporting me in the past year, if you've been a part of the Barrel program before, uh, or if you signed up previously on the newsletter. You all, this is this is for you. This is for you. This is for you. This is for you. And the support that you all have given me in the past year means everything. And if if there is anything left after that, uh, it will be available to like my like kind of like general newsletter. And if you want to sign up for that, uh, just go to fredminnick.com and sign up for it. And as I close out, boys, I want to say thank you. Thank you so so much everybody watching make sure that you are following nate eric and aaron at smoke wagon and this has just been such a wonderful experience for me i had so much fun me and too. I, thank you Fred. I, it was too, so man. much fun so much fun honored to be here with you guys really thank you it. yeah this was really appreciate thank you so much fun and as i kind of close out definitely... what's that buddy I just, it's like, for me, it's like, you know, it's, it's pretty pivotal, pivotal moment for me that I'm, that I'm here on your show. Well, that means a lot. And I will tell you, you, you have joined like you, I, the fact that you came on and were willing to be so candid about everything. That's what it's all about for me. And it was, uh, over a great bourbon. So that's the best oh, part. Thank you. 
I'm glad you liked it because I loved it. And I was like, fuck, what if Fred doesn't like this? <laughs> then I have to question everything. <laughs> I was like, man, these are two winners. This is going to be hard. And then I was like, shit. And Eric, <laughs> Eric, you know, you know, I know you, you've been over to the office. And we've had a lot to drink. And this is this is one that I think that, you know, when we're when we're hanging out on the back porch next time with the new hotel or wherever, I think this is what we're breaking out first and talking about our good times. This is a, this is going to be special. It's going to be special. Thank you. Absolutely. I can't. And I, by the way, I can't wait for your hotels to get open and your Airbnbs are awesome so everyone go check out eric's airbnbs and uh it, as we kind of close out here i just want to say no looking handrails no looking trash cans and remember vodka sucks unless <laughs> it's being used for hand sanitizer cheers everybody <laughs> thanks fred cheers everybody